Oh crap, wait, wait, has to be measured. Yeah, I needed that. I, I didn't see that headphones were coming today. Oh, uh, shit. I, I you, you've got another one there incoming, right? Freaking Talshiar, I hate these guys. Is everyone responding? Yeah. No, oh, come on. I almost hit with the. Oh! Ah! Dude, what? we almost had him! Freaking Akiv! Was it one of the plasma explosions that destroyed it? I don't, I, know, I don't know. My game, like, stinking timed out. And, uh, let me try to get back in. Yeah, I'll try getting as well. What, what the heck's going on? I, right, I can't get I, back in. I'm stuck in the login screen, yeah. Huh. Go check the website. I'll see if I can get in. What? Neverwinter's Night? What? We can't even play Never. That's check the, what, what's the, what do they say on the website? Um, you may want to talk a, take a look yourself. The webs. What the website? Cryptic. Guys and welcome to the Foundry Files. I'm weary. That person up there is not I'm, that important, so I'll double over it. Anyway. Okay, hold on. We kicked your butt in that rebellion. I'm pretty sure we're pretty important. Just saying. I'm Admiral Murphy. Well, Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. Anyway. Go drink what a we got crumpet. To, what, what have we got on today's, uh, what is it? Will be list? Agenda? Whatever you want to call it. I don't know what it's called. Is there a riff? Uh, all right. What are, we, what are we doing today? What are we doing? All right, we've got a, some news. There's been a little bit of news. Again, not much. I don't know what's going on. Make us some Foundry news, Cryptic. But uh, we do have Foundry contest stuff that's going on that we'll tell you about in a spotlight. Then afterwards, we will have a review for you guys. Unless servers crash. We don't know. There, there's the slight possibility because apparently the internet is having server issues. Where something could happen. So who knows? This this episode might not even happen. We don't know. We'll have to see how the universe treats the the internet right now. But uh, I think that's that's it. Should we move into news? Should we? we um, go go do it. I have my jacket on, so yeah. Okay, we're good. Let's go. All right, we've got some Foundry news going on right now. First of all, the Foundry contest voting has begun. There's a bunch of missions. I didn't count to see how many there are. It looked like there was plenty of missions there for you people to go play through. For uh, the Foundry contest, is it seven? I think it's seven. Uh, I think it's seven, yeah. All I have down here is it's uh, shuttle missions. So if you like shuttle missions, there's been a bunch made for this contest that you can go check out. So interesting to see that. We'll uh, have to see. I don't know if we've reviewed a shuttle mission on Foundry Files before. We might have to do another play the winner. I think, I think we've I think we've played a few Foundry, Foundry missions that involve shuttles in the past, but no actual full fledged shuttle missions before. I'm, I'm not sure. And I, I think we might come up with one or two, but I don't think we've actually reviewed it here. We did. Uh, oh, you know what? We did do one. The Doctor Who one was uh, was that in a shuttle? Were you go no, no, you weren't in a shuttle because you wanted to like. I thought no, that was we, you wanted it was, it, it, it was it was something we did ages ago, yeah. so I can't remember what it was. But uh, yeah, upfront guys, don't cheat on those shuttle missions because half of them are probably interiors that are so small you can't even move. Them. Yeah. So you got four tasks through there, so don't even bother. Yep. Anyway, and what's our spotlight this week, Wee Wee? Silent Night by NX89, a Klingon mission. Who? With an air requirement of 16 plus, which would become important, by the way, in Legacy of Romulus. Yay! A suspected traitor and a Riemann assault on Rurapenthe lead to an even greater mystery, where you're never sure who's telling you the truth. 
I feel everyone tells me the truth anyway, so that's quite common over here anyway. So, Americans anyway. never tell the truth. That's our goal. Sudden change of camera. Anyway. <gasps> yes, I've suddenly changed. Um, it's his fault. But we have a few new updates on Tribble from what would it be? It would be yesterday, early today, depending on when this, this douchebag posts the, the, the thing. Um, but there's quite a few actually, and some very interesting ones. This is one big one that I like. Yeah, changing NPC contacts now have more visual variety. Good, they all look the same. More costumes, more, yeah, more costumes. I run it considering they're changelings. <laughs> I know. You can make them uh, look like I a did, moose. I did visual variety to click on TOS NPC contacts again, same thing. Yep. Uh, resolve the issue that prevented players from purchasing additional foundry slots. Good to know. Good thing good I didn't news. have that good, issue. <laughs> good to know. Not good to know. Uh, players will no longer receive mission rewards while in preview mode. Ah. Well, it was kind of irrelevant before anyway because they disabled the native exchange like a year ago. Oh, uh, I loved that I, exploit. <laughs> it's the only yeah, one I ever do, used. Do you remember? It was back when the ca I created both my foundry characters before the 250 emblems went away in that vet reward. And I <laughs> it was the exchange whilst it was still enabled in the foundry got a bit of zen. You, you told me about that and it was just like, hey dude, go to your foundry too. I go, why? And you go, you could get and some it, zen. It's been a fix for like 14 months right now. And it's just I like, I would fixed it after I the first time I, I wonder it. if they're gonna break it again at some point. That'd but, be funny. Unless, yeah. Uh, ground away team no longer appears upon previewing a space map. Yeah, because it's kind of relevant it's though. Weird. Right, just dying space anyway. So I actually saw it. I was testing out. Um, what was it? I think it was Deep Space Eleven because I was swapping out mobs and stuff to finally have it all be Jemadar. And I was testing the mission out, and I see two red shirts just go Whoa, fall. I'm like, what? what, what I, the I hell? did the same thing at the ones I was testing as well. This is like, what are these? What, oh, what are they doing? Oh, what are they doing? Yeah, it was weird. It actually, reminds me of one gecko in the DS9 and Tribble. Just say. Oh yeah, Freaking that was awesome. Jets in the NPCs. Anyway, Giant a hollow worm. Speaking of NPCs, we've got a few new NPC groups added to the foundry. A few. The Alachi, the Alachi which is the new enemy, silent enemy from the Romulan stuff. Whatever the they Reman are. Rebellion is finally in. I, yes. I don't know how long I've waited for this because it's 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 a default. You've got the, the ordinary Remans, which are in, and the Reman Rebellion. Presumably, this and the other group, which is put in the Romulan Republic, will be allied to you, the player. So. You can have like KDF if you're a Klingon player t testing a final mission. You put Women Rebellion and uh, Romulan Republic, and they'll presumably all be allied. That would make sense because uh, there's nowhere in the game where we're actually ever going to fight them, as far as yeah, I know. Yeah, so, so. so you've now got enemy Romulans and Remans and, and allied Romulans and Remans. To well, you have to, did you, were you able to check this on Triple to confirm that, or are we just speculating? Um, I wasn't able to because okay. every time so I. So we're I, speculating I, here, so if we're wrong. I, I, every time I tried to. Tried to create a new founder character. It came up with character creation fail, so I don't know what's happening on that end. Yeah, I just wanted to throw out that that's, we, we haven't looked at this yet. We're just reading the patch notes, because I remember we read the patch notes before and we got something wrong. It was like the, the, the generic group or whatever that wasn't really a group. They like categorized not, categorize something, but I don't know what happened there. Whatever. I, that might be the triple patch note. I don't know. That's we'll weird. Um, Added Alachi and EV Tholian NPC contacts. Finally! Yeah. So Tholian yeah. missions could actually be kind of made now. Yeah, so that Tholian mission we reviewed last week, Arthur, if you're looking at this, updated with that, uh, that Tholian NPC. I want to uh, see it you can't, it's spotlighted, I think. I'm pretty sure it's spotlighted. So it's yeah, locked it off. Is. Damn. Um, but they've also resolved an issue where all dialogues on the map will be copied to all objects during a map duplication. Uh, okay. Yeah, because you have be good. that dialogue is uh, like little random pops up that you can trigger across the map. Optional dialogue pop ups. Um, they're no longer copied now. Alright. At least you don't think that they are. It's all the issue. I don't know where it is. Uh, the waypoint for each market task is no longer larger than actual game in game area of activation. Oh, That's I hated that. And, yeah. That if you put it like so five kilometers in the, the thing, it could be actually three kilometers in game or you put it at 10 and all that kind of stuff it's it, it it was kind of weird how it was working but uh, a bunch of nice new fixes a bunch of nice new features and a couple of new groups which you can play around with very nice well i guess we should review now hero of the empire <laughs> On 
to our review, Hero of the Empire, a good old Klingon mission from a, well, last time we did, it was a couple of weeks ago actually, when we did the entire Nightmare series, which is, yes, and we're still calling, That's what we're it, calling it. it. Hero of the Empire by a certain Mr. Rogue Enterprise, who we're familiar with from the show, who did First Cause and Effect, and he, did he do Not a War as well? No, he did the Mirror one, I forget what the name was. The one oh, where you take on your mirror oh, self. Yeah, it was on the top ten own, list. Well, own worst enemy or something. That's it. Own worst enemy. Yeah. That was a really nice one to see. Well, as of the recording, it has an average star rating of four point four four. Sounds good, but um, it's only got. It's nice early in the stages. It still has it's time to hit four point one nine. Go play it, because it's a really good mission. And as Murphy's described, there are very good reasons for that as well. Yep. Well. You, honorable warrior, are sent on a secret yet simple mission to escort a Cleon freighter. But will the tale retold be entirely accurate? Yeah. Thank you. Please applaud. Yep. I thought, yep. Thank you. Thank you. Throw those flowers. You see, you see fellow viewers, why he's not a Cleon player. What? Come on. That was, that was pretty good. Did you leave a comment if you thought it was good. Let me know. And if you didn't, don't leave it, because I have a poor... Never mind. Anyway, moving on. So, it's a really excellent plot down to its core. I mean, at first it starts out as a simple escort mission. Yeah, we're escorting a freighter. Ooh, how exciting is that? Is uh, but, but after that, I mean, you're not going to do epic things all the time. You Sometimes you just do basic stuff. But the way the story is retold, because basically it's supposed to be a secret mission. But then this guy starts blabbing about it. You go to see what's up. And he's telling this epic tale of what happened. Of course, it's not really what happened. It was just a simple mission. But he, of course, I, I'm going to touch with, I'm going to talk about this in touchstoning. But if you know the Cleons from the past, they love to exaggerate their tales, right, Wee Wee? Crazy. How did you like the plot? I, I thought it was, I, I, it pained me to say this, but it, it's not often seen in the foundry. Such an exaggerated story, I this should be a default, in my point of view. It's a Klingon mission, and half the Klingon culture is nothing but uh, exaggerated stories of epic tales, and they get inspired by that and not, like, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, why is this a unique mission? Why is this original in the pound? It's, it's a fantastic mission, but it's not often procured, in my opinion, in the story. Mm -hmm. so, which makes this even better, in my point of view. That's, that's why I give it such a high score on there. And the, yep. plot. and the characters were really good too you're gonna meet like captain sean of the enterprise stuff like that and uh, and the main cleon freighter captain i like how he's done you don't really get to see his face on the mission and you only actually meet him in person when he starts blabbing about what happened and or what he's saying happened even though most of it's really exaggerated and, and they're, they're definitely memorable and i think it's just because they're bringing elements of some of the favorite characters of fans from the show Mm -hmm. The dialogue is excellently written. It honestly oh. felt like he just this guy. It felt like Rogue was the writer for Core, and he's just like, oh, I'll just write a new Cleon guy using the style yeah. I use for Core. This was the dialogue made half of this plot what it was because yeah. that was the good dialogue. If this exaggerated story wouldn't be half of what it was. Yeah, most likely, I think this is what made the it, mission because it, it requires good epic plot um, logical telling, and this is exactly what happened. It's believable. It's what said, and that's the most important thing. Yep. So it isn't. So there's some good touch in this one. It's not like a new plot to extend another one in the past, but they're drawing from different sources like the Enterprise F, Cleon Culture, Captain Sean, stuff like that. So there's a little bit drawn in so that you'll have like, oh, it's Captain Sean. Nice to meet you, bro. Thanks for saving me from those Romulans and Romulan space and stuff. Uh, no spelling errors. I didn't pick up any grammar, but did you pick some stuff up, Wee Wee? Um, grammar. Manly. Mainly during the storytelling, really, uh, and that was that was the way it was told off. I, I, I didn't notice a few quotation marks when I felt they were necessary, but yeah, all right, kind of little things like that. Story Nothing. scored an eight point six five, our thirteenth ranked in the story category. So great job there. Now moving on to technical, good map usage. While some of them are pre-made or pretty simple, like the space maps, I didn't notice anything off the charts with some of them, though some of them were really cool, like the, there's going to be a planetoid with a secret to it, I'm not going to say what it is, but something cool. Um, 
Uh, but he did make some new interiors, which were really cool. The Fed ones, especially, and it's not—it doesn't feel like a, a sloppily put together Fed interior. Like I, I had a tough time making interiors, and mine are kind of sloppily put together. But this one was really nicely thrown together, and it's nice to see that. Good transitions with plenty to do. Uh, it seemed like there was almost no transition. Oh, right, no transitions during the space scenes at all. Thank you for mm -hmm. reminding me about that, Wee Wee, because yeah. the whole Cause... freighter thing is one thing. Yeah. And we we see that before in other in other missions as well, where there's just, it's just one space instance, but the the author has managed to curate in such a way where you're going to different systems. I think we I think we we played a mission or reviewed a mission in the past where that's happened it was as well. Ceridium when you did the exploration around there. It was oh sort of like yeah, a... that was that was what I was thinking of. Yeah, and Rogue Enterprise has done the same thing here. Uh, it it's still the same instance but you go to different areas and because of the NPC contact being deceased uh, that's been enabled for the past nine months that's a lot easier so that now it's, it's much much easier to just to combine it into one instance so I'm hoping this is the start of a new uh, <laughs> almost a revolution in the way yeah. transitions are made it's so really cool that's to see. The, that little feature has really made a difference especially this one and once again Rogue Enterprise shows his his knowledge and, the, and technique it, through his mission creating uh, the major thing here I want to bring up is it's really truly multi-pathed like you'll go in to a room or something it'll say click this button or this button I don't want to really say what it is because it is kind of spoilery but it'll it, basically I mean, choose I mean, there's a few of them as well but so yeah. it actually depends on the situation yeah so it'll basically say do you want this to happen or this to happen so we'll choose you can either choose to go into this room and fight these bad guys or this room and fight these bad guys and depending on what you click it will throw those guys into that room and then boom but if you play it again you can choose the other bad guys and kill them and stuff like that so that's really cool to see it definitely makes it multi-pathed and then patrols he did a brilliant job of using patrols for the freighter so basically everybody knows that uh, I forget when it was, it wasn't too long ago, but they added in, you could finally make NPCs take a route from here to here, and they would just go back and forth through it. Rogue Enterprise has done a nice job of using this to his advantage for the escort mission, where he just tells the freighter, go from here to here. This is the mission I've been seeking with such an integrated uh, like pl uh, patrol path yeah. that makes it look realistic as if it's following a single direction. This is the first mission I've seen about this. I want to see more of these because mm -hmm. What he's done is put the NPC contact, or it's either that or an NPC blue, um, and he's, he's put it on the patrol path forward. So because that's enabled, it, the freighter in this case is, an, is able to go from one destination to the next, the place he wants to go. But as soon as it reaches that, because you're accompanying it, because it's an escort mission, it deceases the NPC group and spawns an NPC contact, which will stay exactly where it is. And yep. then it repeats when it wants to move again. And that directly leads into the different transitions of the same instance. So this is perfectly well done. Yep. All of this leads up to the same instance of space transitions of different maps. I think I thought this was absolutely brilliant, and the way he put it together was actually really, really good. Really, really good. Great art asset usage to construct the different uh, enhanced environments and make some of the new interiors, like the Fed ship we saw. That was really nice to see. Uh, multiple wow moments with some of the nice new technical tricks and stuff like that. Again, it's something we've never really seen in a mission before. Maybe somebody else tried this, but we ourselves, I don't think we... Have you played a mission that's done tricks like this? Because I haven't. I, like I said, half of the stuff he's done, it, it, it's new. So yeah. I really want to see more of this in the future, if anything. Good instructions in this mission. I don't know if you had any uh, issues though with it. We we with the instructions. I felt they were all right. Uh, I didn't spot too many problems. I didn't spot too many speciality stuff either. It gave a bit of advice at the beginning. We told you where to go. Mm -hmm. We told you what the waypoints were, um, and all that kind of stuff. Mm, it, there was no real need for help, but um, there was all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with it. And then for foundry limitations, nothing much. Two little kind of nitpicky things. Uh, I'll let we go with his first. First one would be probably ones that you Cleon players who try to hook up to Jim Park will find very common. You can't actually talk to him in the foundry. He's not an actual avid contact in, in the first city. You can only talk to his aid. Uh, and I've played a couple of missions, um, I've done this myself, where you have to go to a political aid saying Jim Park's busy. This does the same thing. It, it, it's the first part of the mission, so it's the very first thing you'll do. Go yeah. to the political aid instead of Jim Park himself, because you, you're going to find yourself to Jim Park. Say, one star, I can't find him, he's not talking to me. It's all, yeah, he's the Chancellor, he, he's got all the stuff to do, just, just saying. You're not important enough, sorry. No. 
but uh, also uh, the the Enterprise, which we mentioned earlier as well. The, the, it, he, it gets reskinned at one point, and that's kind of final limitations as well. Nothing really else can do about it. Minor thing, no, nothing really that we really took away from because again, it's, it's a little minor thing. Mm-hmm. Um, then my little one that I had was with the patrols. Now I got a little bit behind on one of them because I guess it, uh, I was killing something a, a little bit further away from the patrol route. And basically the freighter got to the point it was supposed to reach, but I hadn't triggered the next step yet, which caused it to like stop or whatever. And it turned around and started coming back. So it, a little thing there where it's just kind of like, it, it's really not just him saying, okay, go to here, stop, then go to here, stop, then go to here, stop. It is just, yeah. you're doing one step and then having it disappear. Yeah. You think that, that's the final limitation and uh, the, way, the way he's got it set up is um, it, it, it basically is entirely dependent on the fact that you'll actually reach the destination at the same time as the freighter so yep. it won't actually do that um, yeah. so I, there is a workaround for it it's pretty easy but people like you who get drawn away from the battle a lot more um, and then get blown off will probably not find it very useful you'll probably run to that a lot more often technical score is 7.86 are 13th ranked in the technical category like just like story Nice. So, on to gameplay now with Mr. Wee Wee. Is this mission going to be fun for people who just want to shoot things? Generally, yes. Gameplay was interesting. This is the normal stuff, like reach markers and interact with objects. But because they combine into merged maps and therefore directly affect how the transitions, as we mentioned earlier, this, this is another section. Gameplay leads into transitions as well, which is excellent. It's a brilliant use of great asset, of just basic assets. Reach max in interactions. He, he's used it brilliantly with the transitions. Uh, there are a couple of decisions. I think I think it on maybe one in space, as opposed to a few on the ground. That the author uses uh, to utilize two different outcomes for the story. It, this bleeds over into replayability, which we covered a little bit earlier as well. Uh, but uses the gameplay mechanics in two separate encounters as a result. So I won't I won't say what either of those. You could, you're gonna have to read that yourself. Um, and it's a story, so I'm not gonna do that. But uh, that will also directly lead into the combat as well. Multi-stat groups make for interesting combat scenarios. Now, we have a few instances of this, and I think it's one group was, it, it was a bunch of Federation ships, normal Fed ships, like Intrepid, Akira, Sovereign, all that kind of stuff, but it was reskinned as a fighter squadron for some reason. I don't know whether that was because of the exaggerated story to make it really, really easy. And yeah, it did seem a bit weird, yeah, but it, it made actually sense considering the story. Uh, there are no large battles per se because that that is just reskin as a fighter squadron. But the story exaggerates the combat, which makes it interesting at the same time. The first about half of the mission, I'd say, a third of the mission, it will go through pretty normally. And when you get into the story, uh, then things will start again a lot easier. I'd say in terms of space combat. Ground gameplay, on the other hand, was very engaging. Again, like space combat, decision making is present and is essential to the purpose of the story. There's like at least three different ones on the ground in this one as opposed to just the one in the space. So uh, you'll see it a lot more often and depending on what you choose, it will affect the story directly. There are a few minor optional things to do, not, not regular or consistent, not as we've seen in previous missions, but it's made up of the interactions used to carry in a different direction of the story, I'd say. So generally, I'd say ground gameplay is pretty good just because of the decision there. And ground combat was also very engaging plenty of stat groups in multiple cases some big battles make it interesting especially with more than two factions present but yeah it's not ground has never been as epic space i'd say in terms of combat but i'd say it's still pretty good in this instance yep, as well i enjoyed it mm -hmm. uh, replayability was also present in this mission we've mentioned it many times it's multi-pass not an alternate ending as per se but it's excellent nonetheless it's due to the fact that the decision mentioned earlier, which directly affect the gameplay and story being told. So it affects two different sides of the story. So that, that means if you analyze this mission from all three standpoints and the individual parameters, he's linked basically everything into at least two other different things at the same time. Yep. Very That's nice brilliant. to see. That is what we need. This is the kind of mission which we really need to find more often, I have to say. Uh, it's, like we said, this is multi -path. It's very nearly an alternate ending. It's very nearly an alternate close. ending, but it's close. It's not quite changed. It's it's close, like Murphy said, but there's only the ending stays, but the route to get there doesn't. 
if, if you get that. Yeah. Like we said, multipath. So you can choose different things on on different combinations and to make a different story. So actually, it's it's actually really really well written the way this replayability is because you have a different story mm-hmm. every time. Hey, what a gameplay score! Overall, an eight point one five, which put an eighth place. And nice. considering our gameplay scores, I'd say that was extremely good. Yeah, that that does sound really good because it is tough to get a high uh, gameplay score all the time because usually you forget like non combat stuff and stuff. But this one really spread out. It did a little bit of everything. So no matter if you're looking for maybe some non combat action or some combat action, you're gonna find it in this mission. What do we have to say overall, though, Wee Wee? What's our thought of Hero? Overall, of it's an excellent mission on all fronts and a great fun Klingon mission and. This this dude here, he's not a Klingon player, as you probably noticed, but he's really enjoyed it as well. Hey, I played the Klingon tutorial and it was all right. Actually, it was kind of rad. But on, on a more serious note, though, you you actually really enjoyed it, didn't you? You really enjoyed it. I did. It, it was really Klingon, fun. Yeah. This is this is the kind of thing that we need to see. The more Klingon Foundry missions I play, the more I like the Klingons. Then when I go to play the cryptic stuff, I go, wow, like we're. That's why they need to hire me as a writer. I'll write you Cleon missions. Maybe. Oh, that's why they need to hire your Rogue Enterprises and like it. We need this mission in the actual story. <laughs> wow, way to, way to support me, dude. Thanks, thanks. You know what? You know what? <laughs> anyway, well, scored an 8.22, our seventh ranked overall. So, very yeah, good. Well, yeah, Rogue in this mission generally has had a successful mission with new technical tricks. Yep. This is a feature episode syndrome. Essentially, yeah. I'm just couple of syndromes and symptoms and everything. Syndrome. The DS9 syndrome. The, uh, DS9 syndrome, the Rogue Enterprise DS9 syndrome. syndrome. I'm, I'm just going to say that from now on, so look out for that. Um, so, it's new technical tricks that we haven't found elsewhere today. Yeah, all these missions seem to have done that. Like, yeah. you had the first cause and effect, it was like the cool way to do the temporal loop. You had. The enemy where you face yourself. That was really cool to see. <laughs> and this one where you got. You can choose to branch off in this way through gameplay even and that was cool to see so very nice work there hey so if you uh, like listening to foundry files on the go or you wish you could listen to us on the go we're over on itunes just go over to stoked radio and we're under there that means you can also download stoked radio hey it's this show with the guy with the stash except if it's audio you won't get to see it but you can picture it and you know what he's going to tell you the stone news about all the other stuff Except lockboxes, because lockbox files, when that happens, which it will happen, we'll be covering that. I don't know if Wee Wee's going to come on it. He, he might not lock the lockboxes, but it's going to happen. We're going to have tons of people on. We're going to have su- segments and stuff. It's going to be a bomb, so be, be ready for that. Email us your missions, files at gmail.com. Also, also remember, remember, remember Wee Wee's request, guys. What was that, Wee Wee? A mission, either a plug-in or a, de- a designing of a Klingon Cardassian Alliance mission from the Mirror Universe, or the politics of the Mirror Universe, something else that doesn't concern the Terran Empire. Yeah, so if you make it, email it, foundryfiles, gmail.com. I think in. that's it. Right, Wee Wee? I think that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it, yeah. I think we're done. Yep, so we'll have a, a new mission next week, and then we'll be off the week after. So, hey, we will start seeing you guys later. So, bye. Bye to you back there. Bye. We we wave to that guy before he goes. Come on. Give him, give him a wave. Hey, don't take that. Dude, he's still... What the hell? thing i mean all the time oh what are you doing he turned his webcam off and now we have an advertisement oh Oh, what an asshole wow see this is what you get people when you let uh you host with british people first of all they wear the same jacket all the time and it smells really bad i mean oh my god then you get like the tea and crumpet thing where they're like drinking the crumpets and then eating the tea and you're like and fish and chips don't even get me started on fish and chips and then all they talk about is doctor who it's a good thing i like doctor who because oh i couldn't i couldn't tolerate any of that crap and then they play like that stupid rugby game or whatever where you like hit the thing with the, the oh maybe it's cricket that's what it is cricket oh hi welcome back wee wee i'm gonna start over